Hello friends, today's topic is on syndrome associated with periodontitis, which is nothing but papillon Lefebvre syndrome. Welcome to Dr. Nancy's Daily Bites. So papillon Lefebvre syndrome is a rare and the inheritance mode is autosomal recessive. So you'll be asked questions in the inheritance mode, gene and the chromosome. So the mutation occurs in the cathepsin C, CTSC gene and the location of the gene is in 11Q14Q21 chromosome. Then the predilection is seen in the young age. So you can remember the chromosome number like young age means it mostly occurs in the adolescent period and the adolescent period is between 11 to 19 years. And the chromosome number is also some, somewhere around 11 to 21, right? You can remember it like that. So the manifestation seen orally is the juvenile periodontitis. So the affected individuals exhibit severe periodontitis in both the deciduous and the permanent dentition. So as the deciduous teeth erupt, the gingiva becomes very inflamed, swollen and boggy. And rapid periodontal destruction ensues with ra radiographic examination showing severe alveolar bone loss and teeth that appear to be floating in air. There is another condition which shows floating in air appearance which is cherubism. This will be asked in your neat MCQ. And most patients here exhibit complete loss of the deciduous dentition by 4 to 5 years of age. And during this edentulous period, the gingiva returns to a normal state of health. However, aggressive periodontitis reappears with the eruption of the permanent teeth and most patients are edentulous by 15 years of age. And we have other manifestations like the cutaneous manifestations which becomes evident in the first four years of life. So the most salient finding will be the palmar and plantar keratosis. So we see hyperkeratosis on the elbows, knees, external malleoli, tibial tuberosities and dorsal surfaces of the digits. So digits are fingers and toes. And the skin lesions appear as white, yellow, red or brown flakes with associated crust, cracks and fissures. The fissured thickened plantar skin may cause uh, difficulty in walking and nail dystrophy and superimposed skin infections might all also develop. And apart from this, we see some calcifications in our CT ring. So we see calcification of fox cerebri and also calcification of choroid plexus. And there are other findings like impact somatic development and hepatic abscesses. So these are all the cutaneous and the oral manifestations which we normally encounter. But in some cases in normal structures due to trauma also patient uh, will be having calcification of Fox cerebri. So the optical management requires a multidisciplinary approach which includes pediatrician, periodontist, periodontist, prosthodontist, dermatologist, etc. And the early diagnosis and treatment will improve the patient outcome. So for the management of periodontitis, we can do conventional treatment like scaling and root planing, chlorexidant rinse and oral hygiene maintenance. And it can be combined with systemic antibiotics and extraction of severely affected teeth. And alternatively, but uh, some investigators have told like we can extract all the deciduous teeth to eliminate all the periodontal pathogens followed by antibiotic administration so to prevent the periodontitis in the permanent dentition and the skin lesions can be treated by systemic retinoids emollients topical corticosteroids and keratolytic agents that's it uh, and the neat mcq here we see uh, we have uh, got in 2013 is hyperdontia is mainly found in all except so in the answer is osteopetrosis because in osteopetrosis we see delayed eruption of the teeth and one day in papillon Lefebvre syndrome, cledocranial dysostosis, ectodermal dysplasia and van der Wood syndrome and Down syndrome we see hypodontia. That's it guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more dental bites. Thank you.